Everything you need to know in Figma to design, connect your screens, and preview the simulation, and how to share your preview link so that anyone can try out your masterpiece. If you don't have a Figma account yet, it's easy and free to create at figma.com. From the main screen, let's go right to design file. I like to name my design right away. Then we'll need to start by selecting a frame that's located in this toolbar under the hashtag icon. And then take a look at your options over here at the right. We're designing a phone app today. So I'm going to select the iPhone 13 mini. The frame pops up into my workspace with that size iPhone. There are many ways to plan for your colors. I personally like to drag in an image of my swatch colors. As you can see, we can place images outside of our frames. Okay, let's rename our frame as home and then go right to drawing our first shape. With the shape tool, I'll draw a rectangle. Let's change the color by clicking here. This panel slides open. You can select a color, type its hex code here, or if your colors are in view, use the fun eyedropper tool. Now I'll move the rectangle into place and adjust the size a bit. I want rounded corners. We can do that here. Type in 40 for the corner radius. It changed all of the corners, but I just want the top corners rounded. It's easy enough. That's what this icon means. I'll change the bottom corners back to zero. Let's draw another rectangle. I'll adjust the size and placement and then select a color. From our desktop, let's now drag our first image into Figma. I created a status bar cheat, but we certainly could create these design elements right in Figma. This is a good moment to take a look at our layers column. Depending on where you begin drawing your shapes, they may not nest under the desired frame. We can simply drag them where we want though. I'll keep my swatches image separate, but I'll select these two rectangles and drag them into my home layer. Now I can see my status bar image because I dragged them underneath it. It's good practice to rename at least some of the design elements so that it's less confusing as we keep creating. Let's learn a bit more about images by dragging in another one. Notice that I can drag my image over the desired frame and it snaps into it. I'll rename my image and drag it to the bottom underneath the other design elements. You'll see that as I scale and move my image around, it adjusts in this manner. I want more control over its placement, so I can click on image to open up these options. Right now, I am concerned with cropping, so I will click on the fill dropdown to select crop. Now we can go back over to the frame and move the image around in this manner. It takes a moment to get used to the different ways to adjust images, so go easy on yourself. I see that one of my colors is blending into the workspace. We can change our workspace color here. Okay, let's go back to the rectangle tool and draw our first button. I'll adjust the size, change the color to orange, and then round the corners by 15 degrees. I know I want three buttons, so I will copy and paste it twice. I see that I need to move my new shapes onto my home layer. Let's create text for our button. I want to change the font style and size and we can do that over here within the text properties. Knowing that I will be reusing this button, I will extend the text box to each edge of the button so that I can center the text easily. Time to organize a bit. I think it's good practice to attach the text to the button by grouping them in the layers panel. We can right click to find group selection and then name it something. Now I realize that it would be better to copy this new group selection instead of what I did. So I will delete those other buttons and then copy and paste my big orange button grouping. Now I can easily rename those other text boxes. Let's create a new text box with November 2023. I'll place it near the top and choose a different font style. I 
I can select a portion of the text within the text box and change its color. Let's create a small circle shape with the ellipse tool. If you know your desired shape dimensions, you can type them over here. I'll place it as so and change it to purple. With the text tool, let's type 26 for a date and change the text styling and center it over the circle. I'll add another text box with the day of the week. I can use the arrow keys to move design elements. I am going to group these three new design elements so that I can easily copy them. I'll rename it. Now I will copy and paste four times for a total of five circles. Note that depending on what you may have selected, sometimes things get disorganized and nest inside other groupings. That's what just happened here. Then by viewing the smart guides, I will nudge them into a pleasing unified arrangement. Now I can click into each text box to change the weekday and date. We are almost finished with our home screen. I need to make a couple of simple icons. With the text tool, I'll type the right arrow key and then adjust its font, size, and color. Instead of finding and pulling in an image for the three lines icon, I can make it real quick using the line tool. I'll zoom in and select line under the shape tool drop down. We can draw straight lines by holding down the shift key. We can enter the width dimensions here and then the stroke thickness down here. I'll change the line color to white, and then this is how we can change to rounded corners for our lines. I will copy and paste it twice and then arrange them as so. I'll select and group my lines to keep them organized. Then I will move it into place. Our first frame is completed. It gets much easier from here because many of our design elements are created so we can copy and paste a lot now. We can start our second frame by copy and pasting our home frame. I'm using the command C and V shortcuts a lot. I will rename the duplicate to create task. Then I will delete the parts I don't want for this frame. Using the text formatting already in place for November 2023, I will double click inside there and name it Create Task. Then I will lengthen my rounded rectangle. I need to drag that rectangle underneath the top one in the layers panel. That's better. I'll bump up my Create Task button and drag a new image onto my workspace. As I did with the status bar, I created a cheat image here with the keyboard. I will move it to the bottom and line it up with the frame edges. I need another purple circle, but just the circle. I'm copying from the home screen, but I think I just created more work than necessary since I copied the grouping. Creating from scratch would have been easier. I'm going to copy and paste this arrow change it to a left arrow and then change the color to black and then move it onto my new circle. Now I will copy and paste this big orange button grouping. I want to scale down the new button. In order to scale only the rectangle shape, I need to open the grouping in the layers panel and then inside there select the rectangle. I'll call this medium orange button and change my text to November 26. Let's copy and paste that and change that text to 1030 AM. Now let's draw a new rectangle. I'll make it white with rounded corners of 10. Let's add header text. I will adjust the font from Carla medium to Carla regular, then adjust the color. Let's create a second header by copying and pasting. I'll nudge the design elements around until they look more pleasing to me. Let's add example text to the typing area. I'm going to speed things up now and show you two more screens that I created. I'll copy the third screen from the home screen again and rename it Timeline and then delete the parts I won't need. I used the line and ellipse tools to create this simple timeline graphic. 
I created the second and third circles by adding a stroke and changing the fill color to the color behind it so that it appears empty. I added more text and varied the text styling and size. Then I created an add button using the ellipse tool and text tool for the plus sign. Oh, and to create the check mark, I used the keyboard shortcut option V. Now I'll copy the fourth screen from the create task screen and rename it update task. I used most of the same design elements, so I only deleted a couple of things. I changed up the buttons and expanded the text field. You can see that as we create more screens for our app design, it gets so much easier and faster because we reuse so much. Now to the most fun part, at least in my opinion. I'll zoom out and go to the prototype tab. This is where we simulate screen interaction by creating a connection. Click on this create task button and look for the circular node. All you need to do is click and drag that to the screen you want to connect to. Let's do this for as many buttons that make sense for the screens we have created. If I were to complete my design, I would create several more screens, such as one for view calendar and some screens that would be connected to the hamburger icon. I'll connect these back buttons. We are creating a simulation that we can now preview using this play icon up here. I love this part. I can click on the parts I created connections for and see if I like the simulation. This is where we really focus on the user experience and how we can improve it. We can always go back to the design tab and keep creating or editing. In fact, I meant to change some of my date circles to a lighter color with the idea that the purple circle would indicate today's date. Now take a look at the share button and options in this window. You can invite specific people here, or as I will do, change this option for anyone with a link. If you plan to collaborate with anyone, that's what the key and edit option is for. Figma is so user-friendly and intuitive that if you followed along with this video, I expect you can figure out so much more on your own now. Have some fun with it.